All right, so 2020, we got another spear fishing season rolling up here in the next few months. Um, but today I really wanted to focus on some of the gear that I'm going to be using this year. Um, a lot of this is not new gear, but I just want to kind of go over what I'm going to be using. A lot of you guys ask me questions about how I rig up and what I'm using to dive. And I'm just going to kind of go over, I guess, the basics and then what I use and why I use it. So to start, essential basic spearfishing gear. You need your mask, snorkel. You need a pair of gloves. A lot of people might say no, but I would say that's pretty essential. You need a pair of free diving fins and a spear gun. I think that's it. You need fins, a mask, snorkel, spear gun, and then I would say gloves. Oh, and, and I almost forgot. You needed a good knife. This is super crucial. Even though this knife is pure, I don't like this knife. Good spear fishing knife is definitely a necessity. All right, so for my gear that I'm using this year, I kind of already showed you all the essentials, um, but I'm just gonna go into a little more detail. This is my mask, Octo Mask Freediver. I've shown this in a few other videos. Uh, it's not the greatest freediving mask. It's a little bit heavy, but the reason for that is you gotta carry a GoPro up here, so that's why I use it. It's got the steel frame, so it really keeps, it really counters the weight of the GoPro and actually keeps the mask from leaking. A lot of the other GoPro masks will leak because of the extra weight on top. And with that, we got the snorkel, super basic, J-tube. Uh, you can get these on Neptonics, really anywhere. You just wanna go with a simple, flexible snorkel. Gloves, these are actually pretty important. Anything that is Kevlar or Dyneema, uh, these are the hatch gloves. I'm pretty sure all of the companies use like the same manufacturer or same kind of materials. They just put on their logo. So any Dyneema or Kevlar is good. As far as like wetsuit, socks, stuff like that, I just have some, some basic some basic socks I got from the dive shop. Nothing too special there. Weight belt, this is a Rob Allen rubber weight belt. Really like it, the rubber really helps um, keep on your body and doesn't slip around. The knife, super, super dull, out of the box, and I've tried sharpening it, but I have not found anything to really do the job. You're gonna have to get like a, you're gonna really have to re-bevel the blade to get it sharp, but I mean, it's got a good point on it. It'll stick a fish, it'll kill a fish, but when it comes to cutting yourself or cutting lines, or getting out of like a sticky situation, it's definitely not the knife. I found myself in a few hairy situations this summer and this knife would not cut. So the next thing, when the water does get cold, I do wear a wetsuit. This is a Rife suit. Uh, don't wear this too often, but I really like it. It's an open cell, keeps me really warm. And key here is having a hood. If you're gonna get a wetsuit and you're diving in cold water, the hood is essential. You lose a lot of your heat through your head. So. If you don't have anything covering your head, you're gonna get cold, even if you do have a really thick wetsuit. This is the one for really cold water that I use. And then I also use this one right here, it's a scuba suit. It's a closed cell, so I don't have to lube up or anything to get in it. Uh, pretty basic black suit, you see it in a lot of my videos. This is like my summer wetsuit when it's not as cold. And I do wear a wetsuit. Most of the time I'm diving, I actually have people ask me why I wear a wetsuit, even when the water is super warm. And you can really go into detail with that, but really basics for me is safety. I do actually get cold easily, so after you dive for two hours, say, even if you are in warm water, start to cool down a little bit. Um, but like I said, the safety aspect of it for me keeps you afloat a little bit better when you're breathing up. And then in the case of, say, like a blackout, um, it'll kind of keep you up higher. Um, also, it just provides good protection from, I dive around the oil rigs, a lot of rocks, barnacles, stuff like that. So it keeps me protected from that, fish spines and jellyfish. So really like it for that. The next thing, fins. I got two pairs of fins. I got a plastic pair. This is for my shore diving at the jetties. You can see there is a ton of scratches here. The reason I have these is I don't want to get these expensive carbons all scratched up. So these are really good. You don't really need a carbon pair of fins. Uh, this was one of my first pairs. And these are really durable and really good for diving around structure where you're not really worried about messing your fins up. So I have the carbons here. These are Carbonio GFT. I got them off Neptonics. And then I put on a Reef Runner uh, fin skin. This is really uh, not really for the looks, although I've been told this is probably a good shark attractant. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can leave your opinion to that. I've dove with sharks around it. They didn't really seem to react to it, but you know, 
kind of does look like a juicy little mahi mahi on my feet. Uh, but I got these to protect my carbon, the carbon side uh, from the rig legs. I do dive around a lot of that, so you can actually see there's some scratches. I even have some scratches here. Uh, but yeah, I have the carbon fins. Usually I wear these when I go offshore, we're diving in deeper water. Um, I like these a lot because they're a lot lighter than a plastic fin and they do actually help you uh, dive. So really like those. Not a necessity, but that's my offshore, that's my offshore free diving fin. All right, I'm very, I'm very cluttered right now. We got the wetsuit, fins. Oh, right here, this is my, let me, let me put this up. This is my rash guard, if you watch any of my videos. Oh my, if you watch any of my spearfishing videos, you've definitely seen this. Just a simple rash guard, doesn't provide any insulation. I use this a lot when it's warmer, let's say I'm not wearing a wetsuit or at the jetties. Like I said, it's just a protection layer, it protects my skin from jellyfish, rocks, just little scratches, stuff like that. Really like it and it's got a little chest loading pad, so. Oh yeah, I have a free diving watch. Again, not a necessity, but I really like this. Not only can I see how deep I'm diving and how long I'm diving, but whenever I get back up to the surface and I'm recovering, it actually will tell me how long I've been on the surface. So in free diving, typically you want to be up recovering after a dive for at least double the amount of time that you are down. So this will help me with that. And it's got some other safety features and it. it beeps at certain depths or at a certain time that you're underwater. So really like that. I use that a lot every time I go diving. I guess we did need this still. All right, so now to show y'all what probably most of y'all came here to see, we're gonna go over the spear guns now. So, spear guns, there's a lot of different guns. It's it's pretty much endless, and when I got into spear fishing, I had a hard time choosing a gun because there were so many. Didn't know why certain guns were one way. Uh, say like the mid handle, you have rear handle, you got rollers. There's just a lot of different factors, but really when it comes to diving, keep it simple. For me, a simpler spear gun is a better spear gun. To start, I want to say the size of your spear gun is really going to depend on the clarity of the water you're diving and how you set it up is going to depend on, again, where you're diving, how you're diving, but more specifically what fish you're targeting. So to start, this is kind of my near shore and jetty spear fishing gun, more for murky water or when I'm diving around structure like the oil rigs. Super small, this is a 38 inch Rife Metal Tech 1, super robust, it's got a metal body, got an 8 mil shaft on here three 14 and a half mil bands. And I just put on this reel this past summer. And I use this a lot at the jetties for super low visibility. It's got a mid handle, so I'm able to choke up on the gun and uh, dive around and kill fish in really low clarity. I've shot sheep's head, mango snapper, in like four to five feet of visibility with this gun. So super, super good. Mid handle is really nice for diving dirty water or really just getting more punch out of a smaller gun having less reach in front of you. It has its trade-offs, um, but that's what this is for. I really like this for the rigs offshore also. Um, I didn't start using it until this past summer, like I said, because I got this reel. So just kind of swimming around all the rig legs. If you watched my videos from the summer, um, it's just a lot more maneuverable than say having a larger rear handle on the rigs. So when it comes to diving around rocks or structure, really down here in Texas, you're diving pretty tough conditions all the time. So. Having a robust metal gun is good for me. That's my first gun, my jetty gun. Dirty water to the dive in the oil rig, stuff like that. The next gun, kind of similar to that purpose, but this is more of my offshore setup for the rigs. A little bit of open water, clear water, and big, big fish to, I mean, mango snapper to bigger fish upwards to like ling. Uh, this is a Rob Allen 100 centimeter roller gun i just put on a reel recently as well i had a smaller one before but i got spooled like on every single fish i would shoot i would get spooled and i had a 30 meter reel on here i would shoot mango snapper ling like mango snapper were spooling me but i just got this upgrade i think it's a 50 meter reel so it should be good on that did put on an aftermarket manny sub roller head this isn't too new i got it a year or so ago um, really like it and you know, I could talk about rollers for another 20 minutes, but just to keep it simple today, you don't really need a roller. You don't really need a roller for, for what I do, uh, but I wanted to try it out. Now, what I like about this is 
really the main thing I like about it is that it really reduces a lot of that recoil you get from a stock standard twin band gun or just regular band gun. It prevents a lot of that recoil and shaft deflection that you would get say if you were shooting a stock gun that kicks like hell and your hand kind of shoots off at an angle. It just, I can go on and on and talk about this. If you guys actually want me to make another video about kind of how spear guns shoot in the water, I've done a lot of testing in the pool and I've seen how each gun reacts when you shoot and how accuracy is affected. Like I said, I can go into really in depth on this and uh, really talk about spear guns. Um, I mean, all of the guns typically shoot fairly well, but you'd be surprised on how better or worse some spear guns shoot compared to others. Anyways, we got kind of sidetracked there, but if you guys want to see that video, let me know. I'll get in the pool, do some testing, show y'all some slow-mo on what happens and why certain things happen when you're shooting spear guns. It's pretty interesting to me. I've done a lot, a lot of testing, and I've made a lot of decisions on what spear guns I use because of that, so. This is really my Clear water, offshore, spear gun, super robust. Again, it's got an aluminum body. I don't have to worry about it getting jacked up on the rigs. Uh, good reel, Rob Allen is honestly one of my favorite brands for spear fishing just because their gear is so tough and it's built to be beaten up and used and it's really made to be able to land good fish. You know, they're not messing around. Everything is high quality. I've shot mango snapper, red snapper, cobia, kingfish all sorts of stuff on this gun. So really like it. Um, this one's for a little bit clearer water and more open water than the Metal Tech. I still use this on the rigs a lot and you can see that in my other videos as well. But enough with that, I can do a review on this if you guys wanna see it. If you guys wanna see reviews on any of these spear guns or any of my gear, leave a comment down below and I can make that happen. I can talk about these things for so long, but I wanna keep this video short, so we're gonna move on. This is actually not my spear gun right here. But I definitely want to show y'all. This is a Pathos laser open carbon. Now this, instead of aluminum, has a carbon barrel. And uh, it's a lot lighter than the aluminum. And they say it's a lot stronger as well. So I'm actually thinking about picking one of these up this year. Reason being, I guess, is this is probably one of the most accurate spear guns I've ever shot. I'll have to make another video on why that's the case and my preferences on the spear guns. But just want to throw that out there. This is a 120 centimeter. Again, you can use this at the close rigs, but you can also use this in the blue water, being a 120. It's got a 7.5 mil shaft on here. It's also rigged up with a slip tip for big fish. It'll shoot big lean kingfish, and even you can dive the rigs with it in the clear water. So pretty good gun. Again, we've got a reel. And another thing I didn't mention, I almost forgot. Uh, if you didn't notice, the shooting line on these spear guns is this high-vis Dyneema. Now, a lot of the guns that will come out of the box whenever you order them are rigged with mono. And then even a lot of people use cable, but I use this, I get it from Benthic Ocean Sports, but I think a lot of companies uh, have the same line, they just make their own name on it. Honestly, a lot of spearfishing gear is just from a manufacturer and companies putting their sticker on it. And most of it, and a lot of it is like the same product. The shooting line that I use is the 1.7. Benthic sells it, I'm sure some other companies. I think Aussie Reels, sells the same line. I just really like it because it's pretty stiff, robust, and, and I've really found it to be the key for diving the oil rigs here. I tried monofilament shooting line. That stuff cuts right off on the rigs. I've tried cable. Cable works, but it scratches up your gun a lot, and at the end of the day, it's gonna be super kinked up as well as the mono. This stuff right here, it lasts way longer. It won't kink, and it doesn't cut on the rigs. I've actually been really surprised on how on how tough this stuff is. We actually got the reel spooled with 1.9 and the shooting line is 1.7. This is probably the strongest stuff that I've used. I use it on pretty much everything I use spear fishing. The only drawback I'd say to this stuff is if you don't have it wrapped around your gun tight, it can tangle because it is not as stiff as mono or cable. That is the shooting line. Let me know what you guys think. Should I get one of these? The reason I want to get one is because I need another Kind of a, not a blue water gun, but also not a rig diving gun. I need more of an open water gun with a reel. And if you hadn't seen, I used to have an Aimrite 130 King Venom with a reel. Uh, I had some issues with that, so I actually had to send it back. And they offered me a trade up deal. I paid, I paid like the difference and some change to get this gun. This is actually an Aimrite, it's an Aimrite double roller. Super cool. It's like a new shape they're doing now. Uh, cuttlefish barrel with a brand new handle design. I really like this handle a lot more than the older Aimrites. 
Um, but really the reason I got this gun is because it's a 130, super small, and it's really, really light in the water. This thing is pretty much neutrally buoyant, and I think it wasn't until this summer after shooting this Pathos gun, I didn't ever realize how important the buoyancy of the spear guns is in the water when you're diving. Um, like the Rob, I'm not trying to bash anyone here, but like the Rob Allens and the King Venom were kind of heavy in the water when I was spear fishing and even holding the gun out to shoot. And after shooting the Pathos, the gun is so neutrally buoyant and light in the water, it takes literally no wrist power to hold the gun out and shoot. But like I said, this gun is light in the water, pretty neutrally buoyant, really light out of the water. It is a roller, so that's pretty sweet. It's gonna be my main blue water setup, no reels, gonna be my breakaway to floats. If Or, I actually did it this summer, I just paired it with my belt reel. Uh, it works like that as well. So this is my, I guess my big cannon gun that I'll be using for all my bigger fish. All right, so yeah, my camera died and we have a little operation going outside. So it is a bit loud now, um, but I can go on and on and talk about a lot of different things. Let me know if you guys wanna see. I'm actually thinking about making a video on how shaft diameter and how different band loads affect your shot. You know, like I said, I did a lot of pool testing and I tested a lot of different diameters, 7.5, 8 mil, 7 mil, and different band loads and how that affects your shot with the recoil and how the shaft actually will fly in the water and fly in the water. Shaft doesn't fly, it shoots through the water. Shaft, this how the shaft shoots through the water um, because the shaft actually does not shoot as straight as you might think on a lot of gun setups, you know. So I can talk about that in another video, but hopefully this was kind of helpful for y'all. Maybe you can apply it to your spearfishing if you do spearfish, or if not, maybe find it interesting on how I kind of do my spearfishing here, down here in Texas. So hopefully that kind of provided y'all some insight to see kind of what we do as far as spearfishing, why, and just some of the gear. So let me know what y'all guys think. Really, I'm open ears right now. Uh, the fishing, like I said, it's been slow. Spearfishing's not gonna start up for a while, so let me know, and we'll get it going, and I'll see y'all in the next one.